Coming up on show 409, the horsepower war at the Geneva Motor Show has been won by electric cars. Volvo release their Polestar 3 ideas and Tesla launches the Model 3 in a new country. Those stories and many more coming up on today's show. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world. Thank you for listening to EV News Daily today and the end of your week if you're listening to this on the day I publish. It's heading towards the end of Friday, 8th of March here in the UK. My name is Martin Lee and I've been through every EV story that I can find today, picked out the best ones that I think will save you time. If you wonder when I do this, by the way, I have about a two-hour train journey at the moment because I'm taking on a new a new project, which I can't tell you about yet because it's kind of top secret. But I am doing a bit of travel at the moment, so I'm, I'm using my train time to do all my research and my train time to do uh, all my writing as well. So it's I get to sit there and just read about EV news. Look, I do this anyway. I just thought I might as well do it and then do a podcast for you, if you're sometimes wondering uh, why I ended up doing this. Well, look, I was just surfing the blogs all day anyway, so I might as well save you some time and, uh, and kind of condense the must-know news. Hey, thanks, as always, to the team at myev.com for helping make this show. Myev.com is in the USA, and it's the new way that everyone is buying and selling EVs and learning about them along the way as well, because it's a marketplace that only features EVs. Let's kick off with... Well, a couple of cars that I don't think yet you'll find on myv.com. Maybe one day. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the hypercars that are appearing at the Geneva Motor Show. The struggle to squeeze horsepower into high-performance cars continues, even in the face of stricter environmental regulations, says and writes Dominic for InsideEVs.com today. Nowhere is that more noticeable than at the Geneva Motor Show. The top 18 machines, they've done the math on this, the top 18 machines that are being shown off at Geneva share 17,000 horsepower between them. That's an average of 900 horsepower per vehicle. And the battery power, as you can imagine, is the one that reigns supreme. The top two cars at the Geneva Motor Show, you guessed it, are all electric. Full electric as well. First up, the Rimac C2. And that boasts 1,914 horsepower. I mean, just saying it out loud, because it's written in my notes in front of me, is just seems crazy. 1,914 horsepower. The car with the second highest amount of uh, horse force, I like how Dominic says that, is the uh, gorgeous Pininfarina Batista. And that beautiful Pininfarina styling as well. Uh, I'll put a uh, there's a gorgeous gallery of hypercars on Inside EVs. I'll put a link in the show notes for you. So Volvo are going to release the Polestar three just as soon as they've released the Polestar one, and well, you guessed it, the Polestar two. Volvo brand's Polestar was, will release the all electric and all new Polestar three. But what kind of car is it going to be? It's going to be an SUV, think Model Y territory. At the end of 2021, a company executive said, uh, reports Phil uh, for Electric. Now, following the recent unveiling of its Polestar 2, the company's Polestar 3 is going to be a coupe-style SUV. I'm not sure I get what that is yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. A coupe-style SUV. Digital Trends reports that the Polestar COO... Jonathan Goodman said the new model will be released at the back end of 2021. Knowing how EVs get delayed, let's call that 2022, should we? Goodman also said that the Polestar will continue to expand its models in the next decade. The company looks to keep its simple naming convention. Therefore, three will be followed by four. You guess the rest. I'll put a link to Electrek in the show notes. Right, moving on. And uh, Stephen Loveday at Inside EVs has got the lowdown, actually, on a really interesting story about Tesla moving into a new country. And it just goes to show how little I know. Uh, I, I presume they would be selling cars in this country already, but who knew they weren't? Well, everybody apart from me, probably. Uh, we already knew that Tesla was pushing its hugely popular Model 3 into overseas markets, but it's now going to hit Mexico. And that's a welcome surprise. Uh, the automaker had sent invitations out to an open house in the country, as well as information about the electric car's official launch. Today, Tesla's hosting the unveiling at a Mexico City store. Uh, once again, Tesla proves it's branching out of... Uh, into global markets in a myriad of localities. Uh, many naysayers continue 
Those that want to see the company fail, those that are betting financially, big bucks on the company failing. So they, they put this this FUD out of the FUDsters, this fear, uncertainty and doubt. They put, they'll make anything up and put it out into the world and hope it gets traction that news outlets pick up on it just to see the company crumble. But there's so much good news around Tesla right now. Stock price, by the way, heading back up today. Uh, their newfound focus is clearly in international markets. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. A company that's been selling cars around the world, EVs around the world, I should say, for a while, is Nissan with the Leaf. Nissan's announced a new wave of new versions and upgrades to the Nissan Leaf vehicle range. It's Europe's top-selling 100% electric car, and they say it's going to become more appealing than ever. Let's learn about the Leaf, then. Following the runaway success, they say, of the Leaf E Plus 3.0 Limited Edition. I'll tell you what. It's not the catchiest name, is it? The Leaf E Plus 3.0 Limited Edition Nissan has made its longer-range version available as a permanent edition. Here in Europe, we call it the Tecna Grade, but of course it's called different things around the world. The Leaf will also offer a series of connectivity and technology upgrades to enhance the user experience, coupled with the all-new Nissan Connect Services app. There's a new app coming. Or has it arrived already? No, I've seen too many complaints on my Twitter timeline from people trying to preheat their car and the app failing, so it can't have arrived yet. Uh, Well, I hope it's not the new one anyway. Uh, The new model's navigation system gets TomTom Live with traffic and route optimization. You get comprehensive nav assistance, door-to-door navigation. Uh, The all-new Nissan Connect smartphone app is going to include several remote control functions for charging the car, for battery status as well. Uh, The Nissan Leaf variants are now available to order in Europe. Delivery summer this year. We're moving on to a CEO who says maybe, just maybe, will Tesla have it right? Simon at Teslarati has a story today on their online sales, and that actually hooks in really nicely with our question of the week, which I'll remind you about at the end of the podcast today. Tesla's decision to adopt an online-only model to sell its EVs was defended by the CEO of Carvana. Now, we don't have Carvana here in the UK, but I had some comments recently on a recent question of the week where a couple of people mentioned it. Uh, The CEO is Ernie Garcia. He went on CNBC's Squawk Alley uh, to discuss Tesla's new sales strategy. Uh, He noted that while Tesla will face challenges resulting from going online only, the company's returns policy will be the difference that makes the difference. He uh, goes on to say, uh, sorry, Simon at Teslarati says that Garcia's views on Tesla is coming from a well-established position. Carvana is one of the US's premier online used car dealers. Uh, Carvana, apparently, I don't know, but they sell, they finance, and they buy back used cars through their website. And of course they do all sorts of cars on there. Uh, the growth has been impressive, says Simon, and it's uh, up there with some of the biggest car sites in the US selling all sorts of cars. It's why uh, we have we have similar things over here. It's why I was so excited to uh, connect with the, the team at My EV because it sounds like, well, Carvana sounds great for a certain thing, but you've got to sift through lots of stuff. Wouldn't it be great to have just one place only selling EVs? Well, yeah, there is. You know the punchline to that. Uh, let's talk about Norway. Mark Kane at Inside EVs goes to Norway. Not literally. Well, maybe he did. I don't know. Take a jacket. It's cold. In February last month, almost 6,000 new plug-in electric cars were sold registered really in Norway. It's a third more than a year ago, and it's a world-leading 53.3 market share. Look, I, I'll say it again. I know you heard me the first time. I just want to say it again. 53.3 market share of all cars sold. Plugins. Best February ever. The month of February was the first for volume deliveries of the, uh, yeah, that's the Model 3. The month closed on almost 800 new reservations, uh, registrations, uh, second only to the Golf, all versions of the Volkswagen Golf. So the Model 3 would be ahead of the e-Golf, the Leaf, the Zoe, every other, the BMW i3. Of course, Tesla are going to prioritise Norway as a market because it's a hugely important market for them as well. And it's a country that is leading the way. Okay, so the numbers, the raw numbers are small. The data's small. But it's, it's an indication of what can happen if you get it right where you live. So hopefully your local government, your local legislation, 
looks at Norway, things like driving in bus lanes, free parking, great incentives, great discounts. And of course, you're driving a car that isn't kicking out. Disgusting. Fossil fuels at the back of it as you drive past schools and hospitals. We need clean air. And, you know, obviously on a global scale, but on a micro scale, if you like your neighbours, <laughs> drive an EV. It'll make it nicer in your neighbourhood. And so... Let's look at Norway as an example, as a beacon leading the way. All right, let's finish off on two wheels today. And uh, this is a story from rideapart.com about Eric Buell, who is getting back into the bike market with a company called Fuel, F-U-E-L-L. -L. Uh, the Fuel Urban Mobility position has led them to create two new bikes. The first is called Flow. The Flow bike is 11 kilowatts. Uh, equivalent to about 125 cc that's i think that's the most powerful bike i've ever ridden is a 125 and like i say uh, my wife is very keen for me not to be riding a bike anymore and uh, there's also a 35 kilowatt version as well uh, it's got a integrated uh, gas tank on the bigger one by the way uh, the pure electric ones will do up to 125 miles with two removable batteries up to a kilowatt hour and if you want to find out more details i'll put a link in the show notes but it's kind of interesting that in the in the bike space there's more and more announcements it's almost like every day there seems like an announcement on electrified bikes which is kind of we've been talking about the cars for so long it's it's just great that there's more to talk about hey uh last day to get yours in on sunday we're gonna read out all the answers to this week's question of the week and it's this thanks to myv.com they've set us this question how do you feel about tesla's move to online only sales do you want to test drive a car or aren't you bothered do you think the others will follow or do you think the existing dealership model is the one that you would like to go for i must admit if it was a smaller purchase i don't mind doing online the more i've thought about it this week the more expensive the purchase gets so when you start talking about things like the mercedes eqc the audi e-tron the jaguar i-pace there's no way i'd spend 60 to eighty thousand without spending time with it having a bricks and mortar place that i can go to probably even having a bond with the person selling me the car like you know i know i've not bought things before when i've wanted the product but i've just got a really icky feeling from the salesperson you know because they were a, a seller not an educator. They were just trying to close the deal end of the month or something and they were just desperate. And I'm like, nah, I'm walking away even when I've wanted something. So I think as long as I kind of get on with the person that's selling it and I want that product, I I, I would feel comfortable with, with bricks and mortar. But look, that's my opinion. Don't let it color your view. Please send me your your views and I'll read your email out. Hello at evnewsdaily.com is the email. You can use the comments section of YouTube, Facebook, myv.com as well. There are 197 patrons of the podcast. Uh, we use a funding model called Patreon. It's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Where... Uh, dot com where companies, where individuals uh, at various levels of funding, some people just want to throw in five or ten dollars because they like the mission that we're on and some people like to use it so we like you know mention our supporters and we talk about the people that fund the show whatever reason is you can uh, check out patreon and if you go on there you'll see all sorts of other creators on there as well not just podcasts but people making stuff and uh, and the community building it together if that makes sense but it looks totally it's totally optional so uh, check it out if you want to right so this is show 409 so there are 408 previous episodes online they are online for free if you want to get any of the old ones if you hit subscribe you get the new ones first and free and automatically uh, i want to i want to get the uh reviews up because it really helps recommendations so even if you go like yeah he he's an idiot or i, I you know i don't mind it write what you want one star five star but if you're able to take two minutes to leave a review, it, man, it just makes such a difference. In the meantime, say hi on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter by searching EV News Daily. Do have a wonderful day until we speak at the weekend. Remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>